these standards in the past, but these defeat right. devices that have been being used all over uh, the, the world by, I don't know, what is it, three or four different car companies now? We've got who? VW, Audi, who else is out there? Nissan? Well, that's Volkswagen Group. So you got to remember, Volkswagen Group is is Audi and Volkswagen. It's also Porsche. So under that group, they were using defeat devices because they overpromised and underdelivered their the bosses essentially by saying we can make these vehicles fuel efficient as well as not have to carry blue, which is the urea they put in the exhaust, so that it actually lowers the emissions coming out the tailpipe. Well, they couldn't do that, so they cheated the system and did it and put it in a test mode. Whenever the vehicle idled and certain factors occurred, so they got caught. Eventually, that does happen pretty much any time. Other manufacturers have been fined. The only ones we know 100% for sure because they were found guilty is Volkswagen, and of course, two CEOs went to prison for that. The uh, CEO of VW and the CEO of, of, of Audi, right? Audi, yeah. Yeah, they, they came at them in the middle of the night like they were real criminals. I mean, I guess that's all relative and depends upon what you think a criminal is, but they certainly didn't murder anybody, but uh, I thought it was a bit aggressive. Yeah. Hey, Tyson, uh, sorry we got you back now uh, with the audio. Sorry about that. Give us a little bit of history on these CAFE standards. They've been around for a long time, but uh, really been pushed to the forefront by the Obama administration. Uh, whence they came and what are they doing now? Right, so they were first established in 1975 as a centerpiece of uh, American policy response to the Arab oil embargo of the early 1970s. And from 1975 up until now, uh, fuel economy standards are the most efficient way for not only the United States, but nations all over the world to control uh, uh, gasoline consumption. And so they have been wildly successful as a policy tool to not only prompt innovation in the automobile sector, but deliver savings and safety standards for uh, American consumers and global consumers. And so the fuel economy standards had lagged for a bit during the 1990s, and then there was bipartisan legislation signed into law by President George W. Bush in 2007 that vastly expanded opportunities to increase fuel economy standards. And that's exactly what President Barack Obama did first in uh, 2012, uh, and then in his last month of his presidency, uh, extended uh, these fuel economy standards uh, forward into the future. So right now, the United States, the combined fuel economy standards of light trucks and automobiles is about 32 miles a gallon. And under the Obama proposal, they were going to go from 32 miles a gallon up to 45 miles a gallon by 2025. What the Trump administration uh, proposal would do would be to wipe out most of those gains. You would only see the fuel economy standards increase from the current 32 miles a gallon up to 37 miles a gallon. And this would be probably the most significant regulatory rollback uh, by the Trump administration in terms of its impact on increasing oil demand in the United States. Uh, the estimates would be increasing demand by as much as 800,000 barrels of oil per day by 2035. It also would significantly increase greenhouse gas emissions because the more efficient that an automobile is in its use of gasoline, the less it consumes per mile driven. And so you would see a decrease in greenhouse gas emissions by getting rid of the uh, increase, the Trump administration, we're going to see uh, increase in greenhouse gas emissions equal to uh, the s uh, more than 70 countries uh, in the world. Yep. So, hey, so hey. this is going to have a big impact also on consumer uh, wallets, about $200 billion in increased uh, fuel expenses by 2035. Hey, hey Lauren, what, what's your take? And can the uh, do you think the automakers can uh, comply with uh, the the, pre, the the standards that they exist now, not the ones that are proposed? Yeah. Well, let's start off with currently it's 34.5 miles to the gallon is the corporate average fuel economy, and right now manufacturers are coming in around uh, a little under that. Can they meet that 55 miles to the gallon? No, only if we go electric vehicles, we make cars lighter, which makes them unsafe. And you got to remember, what are people buying right now? Just look at the numbers. The car sales have dropped almost 5% just in one month. People buy SUVs and trucks. In order to make those electric, you're talking about large batteries that are powered by cobalt, neodymium, 
cadmium, lithium, these are all rare earth minerals. And who owns all these mines? China owns all these mines. So we're now going to shift our reliance uh, from Saudi Arabia to China. That's not a wise idea based on today's situation with tariffs and so forth. Even if that gets washed, you still have a problem with what are we going to do with these batteries down the road and how are they going to affect the environment because there's no, there's no way to recycle them. They can only be used so long and then all these very dangerous rare earth minerals are going to be stuck somewhere stacked up like there are solar panels all around the world. So one of the things that the Trump administration had said is this is actually a relief to manufacturers. Yes, they project out five years, ten years in advance to produce products. The only reason they're producing electric vehicles is because they're forced to produce electric vehicles. Sales of them are less than 2%. The vehicles are lighter and more expensive, and consumers aren't buying new cars. They're now keeping cars longer. Over the last four years, the average car length of keeping a vehicle used to be 10 years. Now it's 14 years because people just don't go out and buy new cars every year. Even though we're selling a lot of vehicles, you look at the big picture. If people buy less cars, they're less likely to go to electric vehicles. The sales aren't there. The investment is not there. And, and cost of insurance is higher on these vehicles. Consumers cannot take that burden. So it makes sense why they did this. This is actually helping consumers. Even though Tyson doesn't think so, I understand his position. But I also understand that consumers, especially in the bulk of the country, don't have places to charge, and they really don't want to go out and buy new vehicles every three years like some people do. Yep. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there just because of time. I'm, I'm sorry. We don't have more. We could have gone on this for a longer time. That's Lauren Fix, the car coach and president of the North American.